In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy Palo Alto Global Protect. Now, if you're not familiar with Palo Alto Technologies, Palo Alto Solution, this is the same as saying we're going to deploy Remote Access VPN. And what is Remote Access VPN or Global Protect used for? This allows remote users to connect to uh, resources that are inside the company. And this is going to be a long video, so I just want to kind of build some context of what we're going to do and why. So, for example, we have this topology where we have these two firewalls, Palo Alto firewalls, and we have this network subnet 10100, and this is considered to be the inside network or the LAN network. And on this side, we have the 16810. This is considered to be the outside network or the one that leads to the Internet. Now, on this side of the Internet, we have uh, like the ISP router, the service provider router, and we have a remote user. This can either be an employee or probably you that trying to access the resource inside the company. OK. And we want to do that by using the Internet. OK, and that's why we're going to use Global Protect or Remote Access VPN. Now I'm going to show you how to deploy everything from scratch besides some basic stuff that I have already done on Palo Alto Firewall, such as uh, assigning the IP address to the interface and also uh, adding a state route, setting the router ISP as the default gateway. So you can see I only have two interfaces. So interface one slash one, that's going to be the inside interface where the subnet 10100 is located. And we have the one slash three, that's going to be the outside interface that leads to the internet. And I have the IP address 116811. These interfaces are associated with their specific zone. So I created the inside zone and also the outside zone. And besides of that, if we go to virtual routers, uh, I only have the default one. And just want to show you that I have configured uh, the state route. OK, and the default gateway is the ISP router with the IP address 116817. OK, I didn't configure any policy, but the only thing I enabled was logging on the default policies that allow traffic between interfaces on the same zone. That's the intra zone. OK, so I enabled uh, logging so that we can monitor or troubleshoot in case things don't go the way they're supposed to. OK, so. Let's begin by configuring uh, the certificate authority that we're going to use to authenticate the clients. So to do that, let's go to device certificate management certificates and we're going to generate. So we're going to give it a name uh, that's going to be uh, global global protect CA cert. I'm going to use the same name. We're going to enable certificate authority and that's the only thing we have to do. We're going to generate the certificate authority. OK, now next we're going to generate another certificate that's going to be um, assigned to the uh, global protect portal and global protect gateway. That's so going to give it a name global protect. Uh, that's going to be. Portal and gateway now for the common name that's going to be the uh, gateway and the portal ip address in this case that's going to be the external ip address of the firewall that's going to be 116811 and this is going to be signed by the certificate authority we just created and we're going to generate this certificate okay so this is done Okay, next we're going to create the SSL TLS service profile. We're going to add a new one. It's going to name this as Global Protect SSL TLS profile. And the certificate we're going to use that's going to be the portal and the gateway certificate. 
and we're going to save this. Next, we're going to create the server profile and the authentication profile. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use the LDAP or Active Directory. So I have Windows Server configured and I'm going to reference this Active Directory on Palo Alto. So let's go to server profiles, LDAP, and let's add a new one. Let's name this as Binary Avenue LDAP profile and I'm going to give this a name it's going to be binary avenue now ldap server that's going to be uh the ldap ip address in my case this is going to be 192.168.43.3 i'm going to leave port 389 as the default one now for server settings we're going to select active directory base dn is going to be uh dc binary avenue comma dc uh, com the bind dn so that's going to be uh, the user i'm going to use to uh to get or to connect with this uh, uh active director so i have this user selesio carvalho selesio.carvalho at binary avenue.com and the password it's going to be super secret and I'm going to disable require SSL TLS secure connection. Okay, so I'm going to add this one and next let's go to authentication profile and we're going to add a new authentication profile. So it's taking some time to load. Now this is going to be um, binary avenue authentication pro file okay type is going to be um ldap server profile will be the one we just created so binary avenue ldap profile and here on advanced we have to say okay which users we want to get and just going to select all of them and we're going to save this okay next we're going to create the tunnel uh where the uh clients will land so we go to interfaces tunnel and let's add a new tunnel select uh, tunnel number so virtual router we're going to use the default one security zone we're going to use the inside zones so that's where the users are going to land and you're going to click ok so now we have to enable uh client authentication or user authentication for that zone so let's go to zones inside zone and here we want to enable user identification okay and let's save this now the next step is to configure the portal and the external gateways to do that let's go to device and first let's start by configuring uh that should be global protect so, so that should be a network actually global protect portal and here we want to add a new one so give it a name so global protect portal uh, the interface is going to be the outside interface in my case that's going to be one slash three ipv4 only and the ip address will be the outside interface Okay, so for authentication, we're going to select the SSL TLS service profile we just created. Okay, and then we're going to add the client authentication. Let's call this Global Protect uh, Client Authentication. The authentication profile will be the one we just created, and that should be enough. Okay, so next let's go to agent, actually, port, no. Let's go to agent and here we want to add uh, the CA we just created and we want to install in local certificate store. Okay, just make sure to enable these. Next, we're going to add uh, an agent. So let's give it a name. So it's going to be global protect agent. And we want to add here external, we're going to add an external gateway. Let's give it a uh, global protect external gateway and we're going to select IP address with the gateway IP address 1168 
one one now the source region we're just going to select any okay and we're going to click ok now i just want to make sure that we disable heap data because this firewall doesn't have a license and we don't need that okay we can save this and also this one so next let's go to uh gateways and we're going to add a new gateway so that's going to be uh give it a name global protect um gateway and the interface is going to be uh one slash three the ip address is going to be the external ip address and let's go to authentication you can select the ssl tls service profile and for client authentication we're going to add i'm going to name these as global protect client authentication authentication profile and we're going to save this next we go to agent and here we want to enable tunnel mode and we want to select the tunnel interface we created and we're going to enable ipsec and so now let's go to global settings and here we're going to add uh, client settings so that's going to be global protect client settings and here we want to select the ip pools and this is going to be the range of ip address that's going to be assigned to the clients so just make sure to not use uh, a subnet that you already have on your firewall don't ask me how i know this so I'm going to use the range 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
and try to connect and we are connected so it looks like everything is okay so now let's confirm some uh, settings here so we can see this is the gateway ip address this is the ip address that was assigned to us uh the gateway ip address for how long this is up the protocol how many bytes uh we are sending in terms of packets and so far we didn't receive any packet okay but let's see if we can actually access the internal resources that are behind the firewall if we take a look at our topology we have this client here this linux pc and it has the ip address 10105 and we should be able to uh reach this pc normally without creating any policy because uh, this uh, interface, this subnet is in the same zone as this client. So re remember that policy that I showed you, it allows uh, traffic between interfaces on the same zone by default. Okay, so let's try to reach that uh, PC. So let me bring CMD and just going to run ping to 10.105 and we can do it. Okay, so we're sending four packets, we receive four packets, and we should see four packets inbound here on the gateway, on, on global protocol, on global protect as well. Okay, so this is how you deploy global protect on Palo Alto Firewall. If you took value from this video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next one.